The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Kicking off your Friday right here at TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got more economic data. Why not throw a little bit of a hot producer price index on a week of economic indicators that have indicated whether you're hot, you're cold, you're right in the middle. And right now we end the week on a hot number. We'll see if the market can shake it off. We're only negative by five points. But you see the acceleration at 8.30 this morning. Actually starts at 8.20. Get a couple red bars. There's your drop on the PPI number. We were trading just above 5,050 in the S&P futures at that time. You dropped to about 5,030. We've clawed back about half of that drop right now. NASDAQ 100 still in the green, but a little bit of a drop as well. We're positive by 20 points or about one-tenth percent. You get the Dow out there negative by 100 points or a quarter percent in the red at 38,756 in the Russell just volatility, man. Russell down by 1.3%. We'll call it 26 points in the red at 2041. You jump over to Bitcoin, just chopping around between 52 and 53,000, right in the middle of that range at 52,530. Technically $575 in the green right now. Crude pushing near $78 yet again. You get the acceleration. Let me back it up. You get the acceleration yesterday from 75.52, and we are right up at $78, which is where you were yesterday before a little bit of a sell-off into early this morning, and you rebound nicely. Gold contract, chopping around right now. You see the volatility around gold. We have what? We have yield higher right now. What's that going to do? That's going to put strength in the dollar. That's going to bring back commodity prices, gold prices a little bit lower, gold in particular. You jump over to that dollar index. There's your dollar strength on the PPI number. We jumped from about 404.37 to 404.65. We've given back some of that initial move so far. And then you jump to yields, as we stated. Interesting, we're right back to where we were at the Tuesday lows on the CPI. Now compare that to what the market's done, right? Earnings, just spectacular, man. Just spectacular across the board in terms of what earnings have done. Nonetheless, you got the 10-year right now lower in price, and that is correlating to a 10-year yield right now. You're talking about a yield of 4.311%. Pretty remarkable. Uh, when I talked to Kevin Hinks on Wednesday morning, I think we had 4.3. Talked to him yesterday. We had 4.2. Talked to him today. We don't talk to him today. We talked to him Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But don't forget to check out Fast Market Monday through Friday at 12 noon. You're talking about... 10, 11 basis points. And as Kevin made the point, we'll bring it up again. Uh, why don't they call it just percentages, right? Uh, I guess basis points, 100 basis points is one percentage point, folks. That's why when Lyft had the error earlier in the week and they said 50 basis points, that would be about half a percentage of expansion in earnings. They actually said 500 by mistake, which 500 basis points is 5%. Nonetheless, 10-year yield, 4.31% right now. Your yield on the 10-year. Now, even more than that, we jump over to the short end of that curve. You jump over to the two-year, quite a spike going on as well. The two-year right now, back this up, you can see the two-year actually spiked well below where you were on Tuesday, right? We just saw the 10-year spike to where you were on Tuesday. The short end is really getting some reverberation right now. The two-year is up 11 basis points, the biggest jump in the curve. Here, to take a look at the curve. As we jump around, here's your yield curve. There's your two-year. That's the biggest move out there on the entire yield curve. The two-year up now more than 11 basis points to 4.68%. You compare that to even the 10-year, which is only up seven basis points. And as I mentioned, trading to about a yield of 4.31%, the yield on the 10-year. It's going to be a wild one yet again. Let's jump over to the VIX, get a little negative market action. The VIX, pretty muted action as we're just back to where we were yesterday afternoon. You were as low as about 1390. You see the volatility on that PPI number. We spike. We're at 1433. And let's do it as we get into that PPI number. And it's a hot one, man. Producer prices increased by more than forecast in January. Month over month, 0.3%. 
0.9% on an annual basis. Boy, that sounds great. We're hot, though. Okay, we're hot. It's more than expected. The market have factored in. That number is going to be closer to about 0.6%. And when you get into excluding food and energy, you're actually at a 2% number. You were looking for one6 So core PPI is at 2%. It was supposed to be at one6 Headline PPI is at 0.9%. It was supposed to be at 0.6%. On a monthly basis, that's a mammoth beat. Because you multiply that times 12, if you annualize it, you're talking about 3.6 versus 1.2. And if you annualize the core, we're in trouble again, because that's a 6% annualized if you run at that rate for 12 consecutive months. And I'm not saying you do, it just illustrates on a monthly basis, when you rise 0.5% on a producer price index, and not all producer prices translate into consumer prices, right? Sometimes the producer has to eat some of what's going on there in terms of the higher cost, they just can't transfer it off to the consumer. If they do, right, sales will drop too much. What I found myself thinking when I saw these numbers at 8.30 this morning, is this gonna make things a little tough for some of the earnings? Do they still have the power to take those prices they're paying at the producer level and just pass them right on to the consumer, which is what they've done for the last three years? I don't know if they're gonna have that, and if they don't, then People who are in this industry, okay, as in producing, they're going to have a problem when it comes time to paying higher prices, let alone. So there's, it's almost double-edged, right? As market participants, if this is not as bad for consumer prices as it may indicate, because sometimes those prices do not transfer forward to the consumer from the producer, but if that's the case, then profits get eroded from producer prices rising faster than they can raise consumer prices. So it's double-edged. Either those producer prices usually translate into consumer prices or they impact earnings. So pick your poison. They're either gonna impact inflation, which is a problem, and if they don't impact inflation and inflation somehow mediates and it doesn't transfer onto consumers, then what happens? Then profits are gonna have to suffer because they're still paying more at the producer level even though they no longer have the ability to pass it on to the consumer level. Something to consider as you go forward. And yeah, two-year yields rose to the highest level since mid-December when the Federal Reserve signaled interest rates had peaked. Right? Highest level on that two-year. Quite a move on the two-year, man. You back things up to ZT. For the futures, you did spike to 101.26. You put that thing on a daily just for some context. Kevin Hanks had talked about this one too. Pretty interesting. As you get below where we were on February 13th, Below where we were on the 14th as well, and we hit a low of 101.26. We're just off that level. But if you weren't listening to it, the point Kevin made, and I agreed with it, which is why when you take a look at this chart, I mean, you go through this area, where are we going? We're probably going on 101.12, and half a point in the 10-year, uh, excuse me, two-year, is quite a move. Yeah, we only have six basis points today. Uh, excuse me, we only have six ticks is what the price action is down today. Okay, six ticks gives you 11 basis points in the tenure. So it doesn't look as large, but when you put this on a daily, all right, if you make a run to 10108, but down here, that's all I'm talking about, not outlandish, if you come into this area, that's 21 ticks from where we are. Huge move, if that's what you're talking about on the two year. Stay tuned, folks, we had a lot to talk about. We'll take a look at some of the equities with their numbers when we get back, stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by about six points right now. We're trading at 5,040. We got companies with their numbers out in pretty dramatic fashion. We kick it off with Coinbase. Yeah, quite the acceleration on Coinbase last night, man. First quarterly profit in two years. I would be careful of this equity still. Um, as in, if I want exposure to the crypto, folks, I would just go for the straight crypto itself. Now, listen, this is on quite a tear. Okay, you back this up. We just traded from 70 bucks. We're going to open at 190. We're going to open basically right at the highs you were at in December. What I found interesting, you back things up on Coinbase real quick, and we'll get into I mean, basically, that's what matters. They posted their first quarterly profit in two years. Okay. Now, where are they back to? They're back to where they were two years ago. Okay. Which is after they fell dramatically from 429 near the IPO up to a high of 370 back in November of 2021. Absolutely remarkably talking about two and a half years ago. What I found interesting is where are we trading at? We're trading at about 190. In May of 2021, Bitcoin was at 210. Uh, excuse me, Coinbase. Coinbase was at 210. So you're within a stone's throw of where you were in May of 2021. Maybe you're going to bump into some resistance here, right? Think about it. Anybody that was in this equity back in 2021, you finally get even in 2024 for Coinbase. So be prepared that you might see some resistance. Now, not much volume there compared to where you are in this equity. Just look at the volume as you go across compared to where you were after this thing fell out of bed on the IPO. But price-wise, you're talking about about 208. Now, that's May of 2021. You back up Bitcoin futures, okay? Bitcoin futures in May of 2021 were trading, uh, excuse me, yeah, right here. Basically where you were, right? Pretty interesting. Okay, so yeah, you had quite the acceleration. Um, Bitcoin was as high as 70,000. They made a second peak, if you recall, right? Put this on a monthly to get all the way back there. Okay, let's go Coinbase too. Coinbase goes public in April of 2021. And as I said, May is kind of that low back there that you're already almost back to. And, you know, I know there's a lot of be carefuls here, but I would just buy some Bitcoin. It's going to be the point of this. You look at where we are in and this is May of 2021, right? That is your drop off you got all month, man, okay? You trade it down to 31,000. You have Bitcoin back at 52,000. You're pushing recent highs. Coinbase isn't even there yet, folks, okay? Look at this chart compared. When you're talking about where it was in April, November, you reached a high of 370, 
you're going to be at 180. You're going to be at 50% of where you were versus even Bitcoin. You're pushing 52,000 and the highs are 69. And that's a tail on each of them. So, yes, they got some numbers. They got some profits. The ETF business is going to be very good to them. Point being, right? Uh, net income, $273 million in the fourth quarter, driven by approval of the ETFs and broad expectations of improving macroeconomic conditions. Uh, I don't think we're going back to the days of everybody getting stimulus and trading Dogecoin, though, folks, which was the heyday for Coinbase and Robinhood, etc. Even though Robinhood has had nice earnings as well, right? Earlier in the week, you check back to Robinhood. There's their acceleration, interestingly enough, off of 1169 up to 1390. Um, getting back to the normal business outside of Dogecoin trading of a couple years ago. So be careful in Coinbase. They're going to pop dramatically. They are making money. But guess what, folks? You go over to Coinbase, you jump over to the Analyze tab, you slide down on the fundamentals, and you're talking about a company right now that's valued at $44.5 billion. $44.5 billion. And they just made money for the first time in a couple years. A lot of expectations into that company. And yes, they're in the ultimate growth area in terms of crypto, um, custodials for the ETFs, et cetera. Ethereum is probably coming down the line with one as well, but just get into some Ethereum and some Bitcoin in the longer run if that's where you want exposure versus Coinbase. Okay, what else do we have going on? We got a couple things going on, man. Uh, DoorDash, so they are tumbling. We'll jump around to some of these equities. That was Coinbase, one of them. We got a bunch of equities moving pretty dramatic fashion so far today. We jump over to DoorDash. They're going to open down about 11 bucks. You trade it up higher to 129. I mean, this, it's it's tough going last when everybody else crushes it out of the park in terms of lift shares. Yeah, they're going to be down a bit, but they come out with their numbers on Tuesday. Aside from the debacle they had, pretty remarkable that you actually almost got that spike high that coordinated um, with the, the typo in their earnings. You come back to 14 and by, you know, Thursday, you're trading above 19 yet again. And then you got to follow on Uber, and they got buybacks going on. You trade from 66 to 81 on Uber. So, of course, what's going to happen? Dash is going to catch that sale, that wind in their sale. But not all companies are created equal, folks. And DoorDash is going to have some issues here. And the headline they beat estimates, but shares fall after the big run up. Will invest aggressively in non restaurants abroad in 2024. Uh, total orders increased 23% to 574 million. They were looking for 561, so quite a beat there. Gross value of those orders jumped 22%, beat estimates as well. But yeah, guess what? Shares are up dramatically, and they don't have the results to compare with the likes of Lyft in terms of earning expansion, even at 50 basis points for Lyft. Uh, I think it was a $7 billion share buyback for Uber. Adjusted earnings, 363 million did not exceed the high end of the company's forecast from 320 to 380. So, you know, expectations sky high. You come in in the middle to the upper boundary line of your earnings estimates in the middle. And yeah, that was not enough to validate what they had done recently. I mean, just, you know, just yesterday, this equity was up from 120 to 126. What is that, $6? What is that, 4 or 5% just yesterday? So you're just trading back from where you were Tuesday, for all things considered, for DoorDash. All right, what else? AMAT crushes it out of the park, man. AMAT from 188 up to 217. You're going to open near the 207 price range. You take a look at this. Yeah, so much for sky high expectations as no matter what, man, you can you can get it done even when you have it. And we had some um, trades. I had a bearish trade in AMAT and in Dash in my newsletter for options, folks. Um, both on kind of this run-up. Dash, it worked out. AMAT, not so much. I guess, I guess you know, everywhere else, optimism might be sky high in terms of DoorDash, et cetera. But um, not in the chip sector, man, to pull that headline around. Forecast shows chip rebound is the number over there. And taking a look at some of these in terms of what they had to say. Let me cherry pick a couple. Yeah. Let's see. So second quarter revenue, what they're looking for is 6.5 billion. And the market was looking for 6.34. And that's 160 extra million that you're talking about over 90 days. Sky high expectations as well. There it is there, 6.5 billion. They were looking for about 6.32. Profit in about the buck 80 to 215 range. The average projection was at the lower end of that range, so they give a good profit numbers. Um, yeah, AMAT sees surge in China sales. That's the only danger in the longer term for them, but not in the shorter term right now as they continue to rake it in, man. 
pretty remarkable. Yeah. Th sales in China doubled to $3 billion. Imagine that. Imagine you run a business and you're doing $1.5 billion and all of a sudden you double it to three the next year just in China alone. Demand for such chips is growing because more devices are acquiring connectivity, computing capacity, and the ability to sense the world around them, the Internet of Things, man. While that sector may not continue at its current rate of growth, the need for more chips per device will keep fueling the market, meaning the current buildup is not a bubble. The market will surprise some people. This is the CEO, Gary Dickerson, said in a television interview. Um, there are thousands of chips in an electric vehicle. There are numerous devices on the edge where you're going to see content growth. Pretty cool, man, these chip stocks, right? AMAT, gonna open at 206. We jumped to NVIDIA shares. You're gonna open up another $13 to 739. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the market open. We got a lot to talk about still. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P down just two points, trading at 5,043. We bounce off that low of 5,030 on a hot PPI number. We're up a bit. We'll see where the day leads us. NASDAQ 100, only index in the green right now, positive by just 11 points. But you had quite a drop off as well as we're about 100 points off of the highs we had earlier this morning. Dow negative by 60. You get the Russell off by 23. We jump back to yields. It's going to be interesting to see how this day progresses with yields, how it 
takes in that PPI number. We saw what happened with the CPI number. We've gained it all back. Was that the ultimate dead cat bounce? We will find out. Uh, as it is pretty early in the day right now. And jumping around to some of those equities. So we talked about Dash, down 12.4%. They drop on the open, man. Be careful with DoorDash. Be careful with Lyft as well, man. As I said, if you want exposure, and hey, this is quite a run, man, 12 to 19, okay? But I would get into Uber because you just traded from 68 to 80, and the exposure from Uber with that, anyway, for what it's worth. Uber, Lyft, Dash, not all created equal, man. OK, that food delivery business without the ride hailing business and everything else that goes on top of it, which is why I really like Uber, too. They got freight delivery. Um, I'll tell you an example. Uber. How cool is this? Right. I'm. At grandpa's house a couple weeks ago doing pool day. My dad's house, of course, and. I had his key. No, we were at the office. That's where we were. we're at the office. I had to figure it out. We're at the office with Tommy. Uh, we're there. It was the day that Tommy came on the air with my dad. Okay. He was on the air. I think it was a week or two ago. He appeared for like the morning of the top of the hour update in the first segment. And I had ran down to his car to grab something. I had his key in my pocket. What happens? I end up driving away. Don't pull the key out. He calls me 45 minutes into my drive, says, you don't by chance still have my key in your pocket. I knew right away. I said, oh my God, I get your key in my pocket. I'm 45 minutes away. What do we end up doing? Uber has a package delivery service. I said, Uber's got to be able to do this, right? Uber's got to be able to do this. I opened the app, hadn't even used it in a while. They have a package delivery service. I pull over at a mall because I still had a ways to go, but I didn't want to get even further away, right? Pull over, order the pickup. Car comes within 10 minutes. I hand that guy the key. He drives 50 minutes. No, like longer. It was probably, yeah, because he was going to my dad's house from the office, not the office where I was coming from. So a little bit of a longer trip, about an hour from where I was at that point probably. And it costs 45 bucks or 50 bucks. Tremendous value when you think about it, right? The guys run the package. The moment that you call it, they show up within literally single digit minutes and they make that journey for you instantly. I mean, this, you know, DoorDash isn't doing that. That's the point, okay? And food delivery by itself is very, very expensive at a time when we still have prices rising. So Uber down by 1.3%. We at negative market right now as the S&P rolls over about 10. NASDAQ 100 gives up its gains as well. And let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. The Magnificent 7. Maybe we should call it the Magnificent 6. We're going to have to adjust that. Tesla underperforming. Apple shares. Quite the run up yesterday after the close. And you pull back a bit. And we are negative by one tenth percent. You jump over to Amazon shares. They give it up on the open, down by about 1% right now. You jump over to Microsoft, basically flat at 406 right now. You jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla down about 7 tenths. Quite a run up for them. Yesterday, this week, from 180 to 205 pre-market today, you're backing off a bit at 198.73. Got to talk about NVIDIA, right? NVDA. Yeah, not quite to the highs we saw on Monday, but just remarkable how well it holds up at these levels, man. 746. Now, keep your eye on it. 800 bucks. Our man Basil Chapman's next. He comes up at the Tiger Technician's Hour. He loves those round numbers. And why not, man? 800 seems easy enough for NVIDIA. We have a little ways to go, potentially. I mean, think about how well it's held up as, as rates have risen. What if we were getting a, a dropping rate environment as you were getting this acceleration for NVIDIA? It is doing this as rates are rising. The tenure has risen from 3.8 to 4.3 percentage. Just dramatic, man. Now, the A to B, C to D, your A point, potentially back here in October, at about 100, we're doing even numbers, man. Ballpark it. That's about 100. Your B point's at about 500. You pull back to about 400. You make another $400 run, and you're pushing about 800 right up there. You could do that in a day right now, the way these markets are moving in terms of volatility for NVIDIA. You jump over to AMAT. There's a run for you, man. Look at AMAT from 70 up to 205 on AMAT's run. You didn't even have a pullback on this thing, right? No pullback even. And yeah, you can probably make the case it's right there. And what would that give you? That would give you a run from ballparking almost 70 bucks up to what? $50 and change, maybe 155. What was that? $85 A to B leg off of 30. Look at this. Two, 215 and you're at 205. Whew. So they're getting close. Okay? These little pullbacks that you had, absolutely remarkable that the A to B legs of these tech stocks, folks, this A to B leg was more than a 100% run. That's an $85 
right? Where did I go? 70 to 155. Yeah, that's an $85 A to B leg for a $70 stock. You pull back for a period of two months and you're going to complete the A to B, C to D in an even faster run. This A to B leg was October to August and you're potentially pushing the C to D leg from November 1st, we'll call it since the week of October 30th, November 1st, December, January, February, just three and a half months we're at right now. That gives me worry because <laughs> this is quite an A, leg, a to B leg. You get no pullback. You have a C to D leg that's now pushing a 200% return in the span of about a year and four months. Lofty expectations, but as long as they keep delivering and keep beating, that's really all that matters as they beat. 6.5 billion in revenue coming in the next 90 days. The market was looking for 6.32. There you go. All right, we'll jump to some of the other equities that the market is not being so kind to today. Roku shares. No matter what, this equity just struggles, man. Stiff competition from heavyweights is denting the outlook, is how CNBC calls it. And yeah, they're down dramatically, man. So steeper than expected first quarter loss, struggling to compete with the heavyweights such as Netflix and Amazon for advertising dollars, a huge component of how they plan to make money in the future. Yeah, they're going to lose $2 billion in market value, which is a lot for them. Yeah, and the news was out there that Walmart is going after potential TV maker Vizio. And Roku right now has an exclusive deal with Walmart to sell products fulfilled by the retailer on its devices. So if indeed Walmart is successful, they acquire Vizio, would expect that their unraveled relationship with the world's largest brands and their treasure trove of shopping data will also prevent a significant challenge to Roku's incumbency. Quite a battle, man, when you think about how that relationship shapes what they do. You back things up on a daily. Look at this run, man. You're at 76 bucks. You're probably going back to 55, their last earnings. 56 up to 108, and you're going to give up the 108. That was December 14th, two months. You're at 76 bucks. So you want some action, man. You can trade some Roku, but be careful because you're uh, you're stepping in. Look at these gaps on Roku shares, particularly volatile, to put it lightly. You're down 19.5% today, and on a short-term basis, yeah, you're not stopping, man. You were at 82 bucks on the bounce last night, and you're at 76. You're pushing the lows that we had right on the spike last night. All right, we got S&Ps down by nine right now. Stay tuned, folks. We got a couple more segments. We'll come back. We'll take a look at Trade Desk as they are moving as well. And you got the dollar sitting at 104.53. You got the crude, 77.80. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got Nike shares out here down about 3.3%. The news out there that they're laying off about 2% of their staff. They currently have about 83,700 employees. So you're talking about uh, 1,600 to 1,700 employees is what they're talking about there. Um, firm previously said they're looking for $2 billion in savings, and this is going to happen in two tranches, with the first one beginning today. Job cuts occurring in two phases, according to Nike, Nike memo seen by Bloomberg. The first is going to kick off today and run into next week. The second round is going to be completed by the end of the company's fourth quarter. Uh, nonetheless, the market not liking that news. They're down by 3.44%. No longer having to deal with Tiger Woods out there. They have a lot more going on than that. Um, but yeah, Nike looking to trim some costs in the market, trimming their share price. Down 3.4% to kick things off so far. Okay, we talked about referencing Trade Desk. Let's see where they're trading. They were trading dramatically higher. And you kick things off, Trade Desk, TTD is their symbol. Yeah, there you go. Revenue, 606 million versus the 582. Fourth quarter sales jumped 23% from 491 million a year ago. Net income rising 37% to 97 million from 71 million company approved a $647 million share repurchase. $700 million is buybacks in the future. I mean, quite a number's over here, and you go over, and they deal with advertising, folks. There you, there you go, up by 19.3%, man. Look at this run. I mean, the only thing I'll say is I guess that's the natural point you run to. We'll see how we handle it. Those highs up there, Pushing about 91.66 in July of last year, 91.85 back in July of last year, and you just hit a high of 94 on the dot. Yeah, right on the opening bell, we're giving up some of that, still up by 18.1% for Trade Desk. All right, we can go all, all hour, man, because it's action packed with companies that are moving. DraftKings, they were a little bit lower. Let's see how they're handling. And they get it back. Look at that. So not sure what they said on the conference call. I was looking at this as the market came in. I said, are they doing the conference call? Did they just say something five minutes before the market opened that caused that to spike? Maybe not so much. Maybe just a little bit of action. You see the numbers last night. You see it this morning. DraftKings actually positive on a negative market day. Remember, this market is digesting that PPI number. So pay attention, man. You got the Dow off 150. S&Ps are off by 11. You did have the S&Ps all the way up to a price tag of about 5060 pre-market. So, yes, we're off by 11, but you came into that number about 18 points higher of where we were on the S&Ps at 8.30 a.m. this morning. Uh, but talking about DraftKings, you take a look at this run we're at. We're still well off the highs of 74 bucks in 2001, quite the acceleration from $10, right, up to 45 bucks for DraftKings. Now, You know, they have a deal with Barstool going on, okay? And I found a there was a, a live stream going on the other night. I'll have to see if I can find.
Yeah. So DraftKings and the Barstool deal. So they're partnering up. And what Barstool did the other night, which I thought was really cool, and I'm not a huge Barstool fan. Some of the stuff is entertaining. But overall, is that they've signed a multi-year monster deal with DraftKings. And what they did was they had a live stream going on. And they had to sink 41 straight free throws for the stream to end. Okay? And I just happened to find this by pulling up Instagram or something like that or Facebook. And, of course, Zuckerberg shows me the stream. And I said, 41. And they have a few guys on the staff that can really hit some free throws, man, just by watching it. They line them up. But you have Portnoy had to hit three of them. He had to hit, like, number 15, 30, and 41. He had to hit the last one, of course, because he's the king of that army. So, of course, he's going to make himself the last one. Um, and he can't hit free throws, man, from watching it. So the stream went on for 16 hours. But bringing it back to the business, right? I said, this is remarkable. Gambling's changing everything here. You could bet on that, I'm sure. And I don't know this, okay? But I found myself, and I think you could. I think you could bet on that game. Who's going to make the most free throws out of everybody there? Um, how long was it going to, you know, you could bet on it. And I found myself, you know, the frontier is huge, man. You make that kind of deal, and maybe this is the deal that actually pays off. They were losing money for Penn, which is why Penn ditched them. Penn makes a deal with ESPN. Barstool has a lot of gamblers out there, folks, okay? If we know one thing, young men like to gamble, okay? And that may be good or not. You know, what I hear is we always get into a little gambling because I got a history of online gambling. You shouldn't be able to use your credit card. It always blows my mind right now that, you know, you can't use your credit card to play the lottery, to buy scratch tickets, okay? You shouldn't be able to incur debt at many of these, that's a simple regulation you can make, folks, okay? And this isn't crushing anybody's freedom. It's making sure that young people aren't burying themselves in debt for gambling. You want the freedom to gamble? You want to do it with your money? Do it. There's no problem. That's what government regulations in certain aspects can do. Maybe making sure that people don't use every single available dollar in credit they have to make sure they're making the maximum amount of parlays possible on, you know, Far Eastern women's basketball. Who knows, right? You can gamble on anything. That's the point, okay? But nonetheless, uh, the future is bright, I think, for DraftKings, folks. And I'm not sure how you compete with a juggernaut like them. I mean, FanDuel is out there, okay? And they've been on quite a run as well. What's their symbol? Fan, let's see. Yeah, there's something different, right, aren't they? What's their, what's their parent company? Aren't they something different? We'll pull them up. Um, but there's only, you know, to be the top player is the top player, man. Fan duel with, with Gronk and his kick. I don't know about that ad. Are they going to run it again next year on the Super Bowl? Seems like they made quite a blunder there on. Um... No, I think DraftKings is the one. We'll take a look at it. Yeah. I'll pull up those numbers and I'll check them out because they're important. But I think DraftKings has has the capital, and now they have Barstool behind them. And don't underestimate the power of that Barstool money that he got back for a dollar, man, whether you like it or not, because young men is where it's at, period, when it comes to gambling. I mean, when I was playing online poker, folks, I mean, I don't know why it happens, right? It's interesting why that happens. Um, mine's a little bit different to certain degrees in terms of what drives male versus female. But but for, you know, it's like the, the very few women play poker to the same degree um gambling is a young young men's sport for whatever reason and barstool has quite a command and now they have a deal going on with DraftKings, and i imagine they're going to turn that into a profitable deal seeing that stream i said to myself oh man you know people love to bet on anything now they're going to be able to bet on dave portnoy making free throws think about that right all right these markets are rolling over nasdaq 100 now down by a quarter let's jump around to some of those big stocks Microsoft gives up about $3 on the open. Just like that, you're down by four tenths percent. We jump over to Apple shares. Apple is holding up so well after that Buffett news, man. 183.56, down only two tenths percent right now. Yeah, and back to Nike shares. Down by 3.1% right now for Nike shares. And what was the other one we were just looking at? So another one that was dropping pretty substantially. We'll pull that one up after the break too. All right, I'll find it. Yeah, what were we just looking at? All right. 
We'll get organized. We'll finish it up. We got one more segment. Don't go away, folks. We got market sliding. S&P's down by 15 right now. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got Roku shares dropping 20 plus percent right now at 75.22. And that it was the one I was looking for for the earnings. The one thing I want to mention there, it wasn't just their their miss. OK, but you got some some huge downgrades in Oppenheimer. The biggest one that jumps out, man, Oppenheimer. They go to 110 from a price target. I think it was 150. Let me pull this up. No. Yeah, nonetheless, huge, huge revisions for them. And you're down. So be careful on Roku. Be careful on this market, man. Absolutely remarkable that we've gotten the bounce and we're almost going to give it back. The day is young. We're coming into Friday trading. And guess what, folks? We're closed for Monday. It's Washington's birthday. It's President's Day and the stock market's closed. So get ready for some action as you come into a three-day weekend. And we're rolling over, and we're rolling over right where you came in on Monday. We just got above the CPI numbers. That's where you were in terms of Tuesday morning at 8.30, and we are dropping dramatically from that price level as you just gave up 40 points in the S&Ps, folks. NASDAQ 100 now off 150. We check to yields real quick as we wrap up the program. Nah, they're, they're sustaining. You get the tenure at 109.22. We jump over to the dollar index right now, DXY, at 104.51. And as we finish it up, 
And you jump to, if I could find the article, man, so much news going on this morning. But yeah, um, you're talking about Putin at it again, man. I don't know what is going on with Russia, the election, Trump, but it's a bummer what's going on over there, man. You have this gentleman who seemed like he was fighting for the people and against corruption at all levels, and Putin just whacked him, man, shipped him off to a prison. And, you know, this is at the same time that you got Trump saying that he would almost encourage Russia to attack NATO allies. This is why, man, I find myself in the middle, but I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, man. Look up who NATO is, folks. NATO is Canada, okay? We got a guy running for president saying that, you know, he'd almost encourage Russia to attack NATO members because he wouldn't do anything if they don't pay. And he's out there whacking that guy. 47 years old, Novelny, um, putting in his people above himself. And now he's dead because Putin got it done. Anyway, we'll end on that one, man, because it's an important one, whether you like it or not. Folks, have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Stay tuned for Basil, and I'll see you back here Tuesday morning. Thanks so much for kicking it off right